Hi guys, it's John here and this is the Galaxy S21 benchmark for the Exynos 2100 and finally the Snapdragon 888. So the Snapdragon finally got its Android 12 update yesterday so I quickly installed it and did some tests and I've done a before and after a factory reset on the Snapdragon just like I did on the Exynos so we can now compare both sets of scores. So we'll just go through the Android 12 in place upgrade so without the factory reset and the Geekbench results were quite interesting here so compared to the Exynos 2100 the Snapdragon got 1086 for its single core and 3336 for its multi-core so these are both less than the Exynos 2100 so all good so far if you're an Exynos fan. Next up was the compute result and we already know that the Snapdragon is a bad compute score so we got a score of 4683 compared to the Exynos's 7481. Next up is the Antutu benchmark test and the Snapdragon absolutely smashed it this time with a score of 801,321 in comparison to the Exynos's 765,214. So a huge difference there of at least 40,000 points. Next up we have the stress test for the Snapdragon and here we can see an overall a much better CP performance for the Snapdragon, including its cores as well. So that was a, a win there for the Snapdragon. And then we move on to the 3D Mark tests and we got for the wildlife test, we managed 5859, which doesn't quite beat the Exynos's 6594, but we do finally get a maxed out score on the slingshot test. Okay, and now we can actually compare the test on screen just to prove that this is not being made up at all. And we've now got the Snapdragon, this with its fresh Android 12 install, so it's complete factory reset and everything's back to factory defaults. And we managed to score 1086 for our single core and 3545 for our multi-core. So this in both areas is beating the Exynos now. We can have a look at the compute benchmark as well here. So it still struggles with its compute score sadly. So only 4695 for the Snapdragon here compared to the Exynos's 7374. So a win for the CPU, but a loss for the compute benchmark here. So next up, I want to show you the brand new Antutu benchmark score here. And we've this is the highest score I've ever seen on an S21. We've got 814,071 compared to 746,694 on the Exynos. So we have a look inside here. You can just have a look at the different uh, ratings here. So this is really showing here that the Snapdragon is back on form in a big way, especially since the factory reset. It's actually scored even higher than it did previously. So next we can move on to the 3D Mark scores here. So wildlife test, still just 5877 for the Snapdragon compared to 6454. So we've got 38 frames per second average here on the Exynos compared to just 35 on the Snapdragon. Slingshot though, this is a really interesting one. So previously, as we know that the Snapdragon didn't really manage a maxed out score at all throughout last year, but now we've maxed out and we've absolutely smashed the uh, FPS records here, I think. So if you look at the comparisons here, 74 versus 92, 51 versus 54. Slightly higher here on the physics test for the Exynos, 68.8 versus 59.9. But the next two, 46.90 versus 42.20 and 25.30 versus 24. So that is definitely a win for the Snapdragon. So I know they always say good things come to those who wait and it is definitely the case for Snapdragon users. So your S21 finally up to date and it's also performing the best it's ever done. We can have a look at the stress test in more detail now. So we can see here it's quite interesting because although the Snapdragon looks worse initially because of the up and down and the performance percentage being probably around between 60 and 80 percent, if you look at the cores in comparison the cores are all running faster so we're actually running faster cores and the performance is slightly less. Now that's obviously to be expected the faster you run the less performance you're going to get whereas the Exynos is only running at around 2.2 to 2.5 gigahertz but its performance is better at those speeds so it does look like they've tuned it enough so that you're getting the best performance out of your Exynos, but obviously the performance doesn't mean the speed is going to be any faster. Whereas the Snapdragon here, it's all running pretty much at max speed on all its cores, which is what we've seen in the past, but the performance has taken a bit of a dip here, going down to you know 45%, 50% maybe in places. But overall, I'd still say that that is a win for the Snapdragon. So it's good to see the Snapdragon back on form again. And I think next month we've got our new CPUs coming. So it's gonna be quite interesting to see 
how these two compare to the newer ones. Can the AMD GPU in the new Exynos actually compete against the Adreno in the Snapdragon? I don't know yet, but hopefully it's going to be a closer competition because competition is always good. It's good to have an underdog and you know someone to aim to try and beat. So if the Exynos can get anywhere close to the Snapdragon this year, then it will certainly be quite an interesting year for phones. Now we'll be doing another battery drain test for these two phones and some more gaming tests just to see how they're performing on Android 12. So just look out for those in the coming weeks. If it's not too cold, I will also go out and do a camera comparison test to see if there's been any changes at all in Android 12 to the quality of the cameras on both these phones. So don't forget to like and subscribe. You can also click on the join button, which really helps out. And if you have any questions or comments or want to post your own scores in the description, that's always interesting to see how they all compare. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.